Okay, so let's get started with uh, fractions booklet one, equivalent fractions and simple reduction. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and basically go over some basics of fractions. The top number in any fraction is called the numerator, and the bottom number in any fraction is called the denominator. Uh, you would read this as uh, three out of four equal parts, because in the fraction in the example we have three-fourths, or you'd actually say it as three-fourths. Uh, it's three out of the four are shaded. So equivalent fractions, equivalent basically is a synonymous with equal, equivalent, equal, are fractions that have equal value and represent the same amount. So you need to fill in the blank numerators below. I see one half, that's equal to blank number of fourths. So if I look at my visual example, I have one shaded, one not shaded. If I basically cut each of those in half, I now have four equal parts, and I have two shaded and two not shaded. So my numerator in this case is going to be two. Then you have uh, three out of six, which basically if I had sp uh, split the first one into three parts and the shaded part into three parts, I still have three equal shaded parts compared to my three non-shaded parts. So I have three out of the six. And so following the pattern, that also would be four out of the eight. Moving down, uh, to find the missing part of a set of equivalent fractions, you need to multiply or divide the numerators or denominators by the same number. Whatever is done to one part must be done to the other. So I have one half is equal to blank over 12. Now, to change the denominator from 2 to 12, you must multiply by 6. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. So what I'm going to do is whatever I do to the bottom, or whatever I do to 1, I must do to the other. Since I did 2 times 12, or sorry, 2 times 6 is equal to 12, I must also do 1 times 6, because whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top, and vice versa. So to keep the fractions balanced, I multiply the numerator by 6 as well. So 1 half is equal to 1 times 6, 6 over 12, so 6 twelfths. And for 16 over 24, that's equal to 8 over blank. So in the previous case, we had to multiply. In this case, we're going to have to divide. 16 divided by blank gives me 8. 16 divided by 2. So if I had to do 16 divided by 2 to give me 8, I'm going to also need to do 24 divided by 2. Because I have to basically, whatever I do to one side, I'm, whatever I do to the top, I must do to the bottom, and vice versa. Um, so I'm going to get 16 divided by 24 is equal to 8 over 12. So moving on to uh, page number 9, uh, let's go ahead and start uh, with the first question. So the instructions say, to reduce fractions to their simplest equivalent form, divide by any common factors. So the first one we have here is 3 ninths. So the first thing I need to think of is what are the factors of 3? Basically factors are basically what two numbers multiply to equal 3. In this case, 1 and 3. Now when we're dealing with factors between two numbers, you basically just always want to ignore 1 because anything divided by 1 is itself. So that doesn't simplify anything if it just gives you the same result. In this case, 3 does. 3 will also go into 9, so 3 is the factor I need to use here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have 3 ninths, and I'm going, to divide, I'm going to divide both top and bottom by 3. So you see 3 divided by 3, and that gives me 1. You see 9 divided by 3, and that gives me 3. So basically, to keep the fractions equivalent, remember you need to divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. What you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom. So my final answer in simplest form in this case is one-third. So now we'll go down to eight-sixteenths. And so I see down there, what's a factor of both eight and sixteen? Well, basically, what can go into both eight and sixteen? Well, four can. Okay, so both, let's try four into both. So if I do basically eight divided by four and sixteen divided by four, I'm going to end up with eight divided by four is two, and sixteen divided by four is four. Now I have two-fourths. Am I done? No, because two-fourths is not in the simplest form. Two and four also have a common factor. So let's find out what that is. What goes into both two and four besides one? Ah, it's 
2. So then what we can do is we must divide by both 2 and 4 again by 2. So 2 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2, that ends up with 1 and 2, so 1 half. So the simplest form for this one is just 1 half. Since there are no more common factors between 1 and 2 besides the 1, that's why it's in simplest form now. Moving down now, let's go ahead and reduce the fraction shown. So I'm using the, uh, the visual example here. Uh, in this rectangle, I'm going to count the total number of blocks that I see. Uh, it looks like a, a 4 by 3, so it looks like there are 12 total blocks in this rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 12 in my denominator, because basically the entire thing is 12 total blocks. So I want to see how many of them are shaded. It looks like there is 1, 2, 3, 4, so there are 4 blocks shaded. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in my numerator. So I have a fraction of 4 twelfths. So the next thing I need to think of is, okay, what common factor will divide both 4 and 12? First thing that comes to my mind is 4. 4 goes into 4, and 4 goes into 12. So I'm going to divide both the top and bottom by that number. So I have 4 twelfths. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So my final answer is 1 third. Now you can see the visual example here is basically I've, I, uh, I still have the exact same rectangle and now you can see one third of it is shaded just like the previous rectangle that you, there on the left. Now you can notice that one third is our fraction and one third is our picture so obviously this works. If it didn't work then obviously you need to try to divide the numbers again. So let's go ahead and look down at the, uh, the next one here. I see a total of uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 blocks and it looks like there's 1, 2, 3, 4, there are 5 shaded. So I have a fraction of 5 tenths. So then what common factor will divide both 5 and 10? 5. 5 goes into 5, 5 goes into 10. So I'm going to divide both the top and bottom by that number, just like I did in the previous example. So 5 divided by 5 gives me 1, 10 divided by 5 gives me 2, so it looks like I have an answer of 1 half. And that's exactly what I have here on the right at the visual example, and you can see Half that square, half that rectangle is shaded, so it makes sense.